How is the Ontario government handling the pandemic? Well, recent polling shows the Premier's popularity has taken a hit since last year. We're a year out from the provincial election, so what does all of this mean for Ford and for the PC party? To talk about this, I'm pleased to welcome back to Focus, Martin Ray Kahn, Queen's Park columnist for the Toronto Star. Welcome. Is Doug Ford in any real political trouble here at all? Well, you can never make predictions in politics. The polls are instructive. They tell us about storm warnings, but they don't necessarily predict what's going to happen. What they tell us, though, is that the game is a little more wide open and that and that Ford, my argument, has gone back to his pre-pandemic equilibrium or is headed that way as well. Remember, before the before COVID struck, he was getting booed in public. The populist, popular premier stuff was wearing off. Then COVID arrived and he had a bit of a personality transplant and he started to go way up in the polls like some other leaders. And that stayed with him for much of the last year. What's changed is that his approval ratings are down. The party standings have changed a little bit. The liberals have been in first place in some polls, leaving the new Democrats behind in second and third. And so what, what, what is instructive, though, is that other premiers in Quebec, François Legault, John Horgan in, in British Columbia are still very popular, as is Justin Trudeau. Doug Ford, not so much. And, and you get the sense that with the premier's office that perhaps they, they learned the lesson that Kathleen Wynne didn't seem to be able to listen or, or, or learn, which is if your popularity is heading down, maybe be quiet a little bit. Yeah, duck. Because uh, Doug Ford can't seem to do anything right even when he does i mean there are all kinds of arguments and analyses about what's gone wrong in the last wave of this pandemic uh, the truth is ontario got hit by a lot of variants it did some things wrong it also did some things right but other provinces have also had a hard time and the premier's popularity did not dip as i mentioned so it, remember hydro prices and can't heat uh, or, you know, eat or heat, heat or eat. And Kathleen Wynne couldn't do anything right. And Doug Ford took advantage of that and became premier. There's a bit of an echo of that now where Ford seems to be um, uh, just a, a scapegoat and also accountable for what's been happening. And he can't seem to do anything right. So get out of the way. Uh, just get out of the TV picture and TV frame. Stay at home. He was quarantined for two weeks, you know, convenient and and has been lying low ever since. And I think has learned that lesson a little bit of Kathleen Wynne. And, and I think it really came home to us this week when Ontario released a, a, a very cautious reopening plan. And then there was there was sort of criticism that, it was, OK, now you're not going fast enough, where before the criticism had been, well, you're going too fast. Well, it was, it's interesting that on, that Ford has been hammered so much that he is now gun shy. Let's, let's try to be fair. Uh, I have been criticizing Doug Ford more than anybody and before anybody about sick pay, for example. The fact that he came in and without any opposition from almost anybody, except for perhaps the NDP and the Liberals, took away the two paid sick days that Kathleen Wynne had brought in. He was, he, 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 it was the wrong move at the wrong time. But in the last few weeks, he brought back three days of paid Sick, uh, of, of sick pay. Um, uh, and, and British Columbia didn't until very recently. He has the best sick pay plan arguably in Canada, and yet everybody criticized him for not going far enough. So in a way, he can't do anything right anymore. And what's happened is after being criticized by the science table, volunteer experts for doing not going far enough, going too far, uh, he has decided to lie low and, and let himself be dragged, kicking and screaming uh, he's now calling for a consensus of experts. Everybody has to be on side before he'll make a move so that he can avoid criticism. Well, that's playing it safe. It's not really leadership. You may say that's following the science, but science is never unanimous. At some point, a politician has to look at the trade-offs, take the expert advice, not ignore it, not make dumb, crass decisions, but think about the overall balance. The scientists sitting in their labs or in their ivory towers don't necessarily have the qualifications or the political and democratic mandate to do. Well, I think this, the example that stuck out, stood out so much was saying, well, we, we're not making a decision on whether schools will go back in by June because, as you say, well, 
e even though the chief medical officer of health wants it, there are members of the science table who don't. Right. And it's that's a real contrast from the Doug Ford of about eight months ago, seven, eight months ago, before school came back in September, when he they, they looked at it in t extensively. They looked at the data, they looked at the proximities and they made a judgment call, a political judgment call, because there's no absolute in science or in politics. We're going back to school. We'll give parents the choice to stay home if they want, but we're going back to school. Got hammered. Guess what? It turned out that infection rates, transmission rates in the schools were actually quite reasonable and it was relatively quite safe. And then the government made a decision when we had went through the third wave that transmission rates in the community were high. Let's close down the schools. Fair ball. Good decision. But now the government is reluctant to make the kind of judgment call it did in September because it wants all of its critics, teachers unions, uh, public medical officer of health, opposition and everybody on the science table to be almost unanimous on this. Well, that, you could never have unanimity in a democracy, only in a jury trial. So uh, clearly he is gun shy and he is saying to the to the experts and to the unions, fine, you decide and then I'll go along with your decision. Safe, playing it safe, not exactly bold leadership, but that's where we are today with Doug Ford, one year out from a campaign, risk averse. Martin, always great to talk with you. Thanks again for coming on. Thank you.